Hello and welcome back to my Let's Build series, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. In this video I'm hoping to be creating the mains building, which is going to be one of the largest buildings in the build, if not possibly the most complex one, as the buildings are all going to be very distinctive from one another, as in the book they are described as the most distinctive building of the lot, it covered nearly an acre and a half and looked like it had been cobbled together from a number of smaller, mismatched buildings. Here you can see me starting off by building some roads so I can get a general feel and shape of the area that I'm going to be building on. And unfortunately the day does turn to night, but I end up installing a redstone machine to remove this effect off map, so from now on you won't have to worry about that. I started off by creating a very small structure, more of a practice prototype sort of build than anything, so I could get an idea of what building style I was going to go for. You can see me experimenting with different materials and also setting up the basic design of my medieval house. I ended up setting on trying to use white clairs, I wanted a brighter material on top of stone. But I wasn't very happy with the way it looked, and the building was perhaps one of the worst things I've ever produced in Minecraft in many years. It's just that the textures weren't quite what I wanted and they weren't working out. So I ended up going away and coming back with the Conquest texture pack. And as you can see everything is immediately darker, everything looks a bit grainier, but the wonderful thing about the Conquest texture pack is that it has dynamic textures, so when I put blocks next to one another or on the rare occasion you'll see a difference in the block. For instance in the logs you can see that there is a small dot in random, that's randomised across different ones. I used stone brick for the lower floor and then I started constructing an archway in a medieval roof style using the log frames. Unfortunately, because of the scale of Minecraft, to create a slope that I was happy with, the roof needed to be taller than it probably would need to be if I was using a real scale. Now, I wanted to continue using the white stained clay, and as you can see, with the Conquest Texture Pack, it is much better looking. Rather than a solid white, it has much more you can see in between the cracks where you can see thatch inside. It's much, much better looking. Now, I struggled with the roof of the side passage, which was going to act as a corridor to other buildings, namely because I wasn't entirely sure how much clay I wanted to use and how precisely the roof was going to connect together. In the end, I thought it would be best to keep the number of clay faces as minimal as possible and instead have a simpler roof system. I used wooden stairs after I experimented with different materials to help smooth out the harsh ridges on the roof and also on the archways. I then decided that I would rim the entire house using stone brick stairs as this would add a bit of a contrast between the brown look of the entire building. I also created stone archways to help further frame the faces of the building, just to add a little bit more to them. And on the back you can see me just copying over my previous designs. I thought that this main building would be something like the main entrance way to the main building. I thought that it would work as a nice hub to get to a main courtyard where all the other buildings would be, and it also works as a nice little corridor to a various lecture rooms and different pieces. 
Now the first lecture room that I wanted to build I thought would be an auditorium. When I think of a university I think of things like the Michael Tibbet building at Bass Bar University. And so I wanted to build something that would emphasise that sort of shape. Unfortunately there isn't a way to create seating that would fit within it. So I created more of a stair look, a sloped seating. See that I left a small gap at the bottom, which looks more like a crust over anyway, as mains was built from various buildings mismatched and jumbled together. So I thought leaving a small passage in the corner would sort of emphasise that that was the case, maybe an entrance way to an old building that was repurposed and walled off. cut away some of the stairs to add a side entrance as I thought it was important to be able to access other buildings from this one to further emphasise the chaos of the main building complex that I had in mind. And I decided to use red stained clay which looks very much like uh, roofing slates and I almost thought that it had some sort of a Roman feeling to it. So I kind of wanted to have this as flat as possible to contrast heavily against the archway that I built prior. Now admittedly I realised that after building it it looked somewhat like a pizza restaurant, however in the end I didn't want to go too overboard with the roof or put too much into it as there's a lot that I need to get done. Once I was happy with the roof I started using pink wool to start marking out where other buildings are going to be and the various levels. I also created a basic circle off in the distance there where I'm going to put a clock tower. Now I came back round here and decided that I was going to build something of a tower, small classrooms that could be used for maybe some advanced students, maybe for alchemy, maybe for various subjects that are best kept in small rooms. However, I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to connect all of it as the downstairs portion isn't yet connected in any obvious way to any of the building, but I'll get around to that later. I also constructed the walls for the courtyard, but didn't want to go into it too far. I built up the bottom using white stained clay again, and then came round to the roof and started using cobblestone and then top this with some more white stained clay as I was really getting into the texture. Now there was a moment where the roof of the auditorium was going to clash with the actual building of this small tower and I thought this worked very well in continuing to emphasise how the buildings had been built on top of one another and how they would slowly merged over time. I decided to use spruce wood for the roof as it's darker than the oak stairs that I've used before. However, after building up a flat roof as I had hoped to do, I thought that it just didn't quite look right, even after I added in a small steep at the top just to give it a bit of a different shape. So I ended up cutting the entire thing away and thought about creating another one of my tall archways. I 
I came and decided to build a roof similar to the one I had used in the main, or rather the first building that I had created, just to add another steeple to the series, as my other buildings were unlikely to have them. Now, coming around to this small part, there is a famous courtyard in the book where Auri lives and where Kvothe meets her, but it's closed off and inaccessible because of the way that the buildings have been built up over time. So I only wanted to create a very small closed off square where it could be and wanted to use a similar roofing system, but I didn't want to make it too complicated. And unfortunately you can't see it because of the way that the tree is blocking the view, but I did also add a small sewer grate which would lead to the under thing. Now coming around to the other side, I wanted to start planning out a larger part of my build, which is going to be a clock tower, which ended up being a bell tower of sorts, though clocks are available in the world of The Name of the Wind. And I also wanted some more major classrooms, another auditorium maybe, some workshops perhaps. Now here I'm building up the base of the bell tower using a circle, which would be used in later builds, just to make sure that I'm not building purely using squares and rectangles, as can often happen in Minecraft. I built up a circular base and then came up. I did realise my mistake after a while in my placing of the pillars at the bottom, which had caused some sizing issues when I was building up originally. At first I wanted to build the bell tower out of stone, as I thought that a building as large as that would almost be like a church monolith as I'd seen in the past. But I thought that it looked too bland, it was just too grey. It was hard to distinguish what it was. So I ended up experimenting with quartz blocks, but I thought that it was a bit too bright, even with the sculpted blocks and the pillar blocks, and that it was just a bit too over-designed. So I ended up using lapis lazuli, which under the conquest texture pack dynamically changes depending on what it is. And here you can see they almost looks like two men standing side by side. But there were various occasions when I realised that the way I set up the lapis was really made it look like the building had a face that was crying half the time. So I ended up simplifying my design after going through various different templates and using some lapis lazuli to create distinctive collars on the base of the belt outline. For a roof, I didn't want to create anything too tall, as I was worried that it was going to get higher than the archives, which is supposed to be the highest building in the build. So I ended up using spruce staircase to continue the colour contrast. I then constructed a small golden bell, and the only complaint I have is that with this texture pack, the gold block doesn't quite fit the bell from my personal aesthetic taste, but functionally, from a distance, it looks okay. I also added some torches into the top of the tower to ensure that the gold was illuminated a bit better, and used the world edit tool just to lift the bell up a bit so it has some room to breathe underneath it. In the distance you can see the base that I built before, but I thought that it was far too large and that it didn't really fit what I built on top of it. So I ended up deciding to create a different base, and although
Though this wasn't going to be a circular base as I had originally wanted it to be, I did think of a way to make it look different by using stone staircases to make a small partition of the tower look depressed. I used a similar design from the lapis lazuli that I used on the previous tower and was very careful to ensure that it didn't look like another crying face, as you saw a moment ago. I continued adding stone steps around the base of the building just to make sure that it smoothed out a little into the ground and that it didn't look quite as chunky as it did with its new square foundation. Now I think that after constructing the bell tower that I would stop for a moment and think more about the buildings that I was going to construct alongside the main building. But for the moment I'm quite happy with what I've built, I'm very happy with the way that the bell tower has turned out, though I am a little saddened that I couldn't use the circular base which I've kept saved off in the distance so that if I do want to switch it back I can easily copy and paste it back in using the world edit tool. I'm very happy with the main entrance building, I'm loving the roof which I came around and added some stone steps to the top and also some fence posts to the wooden logs just to add a little bit of extra texture to it. And I'm also very happy with the way that the added buildings on the side are added to the entire complex. I went into each of them off camera and, put, and fully flushed them out and furnished them adding alchemical regions to the top floor of the stained clay building and adding some workbenches to the currently inaccessible room below. My next stages on this build is to start creating more classrooms, another auditorium and then afterwards I'll be moving on to Muse. But for the moment I'm very happy with what I've managed to build in this time and I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you'll continue watching my video series. Thank you.